Mark Solms. I'm the head of the Department of Psychology at UCT, and we're in fact in the building that houses my department. Behind me is a mural that was made by the Professor of Fine Arts at this university, Pippa Scottness. And what this mural depicts is the mind, that is, the object of study of psychology. It was actually very difficult for her to come up with this mural for the reason that psychology is a difficult science. I'm referring to the fact that you can't see the mind. In fact, one of the most essential features of the mind is that it's not a thing. It's not an object out there in the world. So to make a visual depiction as an artist has to of the mind is no easy task. The way that Pippa Scottness went about it was to speak to a woman who speaks a language called Mu, which is a, about to become extinct. She's one of the last two people on the, on the planet who speaks that language. She spoke to her about the, her word for the mind. It turns out that the Mu word for the mind is the same as the Mu word for breath. And this artwork is called Breath. It depicts down below, there's a sort of an animal woman person breathing out all of the shapes that you see exhaled over that wall. Those shapes represent, firstly, languages which are extinct. There's a precise number of known languages that are now extinct. And other shapes represent what are called end-optic phenomena, which are found in rock art all over the world, North America, Europe, Africa. These funny shapes, which seem to somehow be inherent properties of the mind. So that was Pippa's attempt to depict the mind, based on an ancient culture, which saw the mind as somehow the same as breath. And you can see why they might have seen it that way, because uh, breath, like the mind, is invisible, but also somehow seems to be inherently tied to our existence, to our, to our being alive. When you breathe your last breath, you no longer have a mind. In the science of psychology, uh, in modern times, we've learned a lot more about the mind than that it's like a breath. And what I'm going to do in this course is teach you in broad outline some of the main things that we've learned from the point of view of neuroscience, neuropsychology and also psychoanalysis, combining all of these different disciplines and also philosophy of mind to give you some sort of essential picture of what we've learned about that same question that Pippa asked the new speaking woman. What is a mind? What do we call it? How can we see it? What does it look like? And I'm going to try to do that from the point of view of my discipline. I think it's a really important question, what is a mind? Because after all, what are you if not your mind? <laughs>